Here I am, Leon C. Got another wonderful video for you, my American people, to empower you and give you some very awesome support. I've received another email by a wonderful viewer who asked me to produce this video to answer some questions and to thoroughly explain my interpretation of the psychology of a toxic person. This person's been going through a lot of stress in her family, actually specifically in her marriage. And in her marriage, they interact with their sisters or their brothers, and sometimes there's some toxic energy. And she feels as if she may owe them something because that they're a family. I have to tell you, just because you're family, that doesn't mean you have to be tied into them, okay? Just because they are family, you don't owe them anything. Although you need to be supportive of your family. Although you need to help your family. Although you need and you can be there for your family. Okay? They can also be the most toxic energy that can bring you and your family or you and what you're trying to do down. So I'm going to identify Morpheus style on what is a toxic person this is a very important video because a lot of people live with it and they deal with it and they don't know that they are around toxic energy and they bring that toxic energy within themselves and they share it amongst their own innocent people around their lifestyle okay so to get this started i'm gonna go ahead and give you your red peel because you're gonna need this okay i'm gonna try my best to make this short and sweet there are several stages to a toxic person and it, the list goes on, okay? It doesn't stop. But I have listed several of the highest factors to identify a toxic person and what you need to avoid with just simple people who may not be toxic people, but they have, they have toxic potential. They have toxicity where it harms you, your everyday, and your own thoughts. So let's get this started, okay? Morpheus style. First toxic is an individual who goes by rumors. They love rumors. They love gossip. Okay. They're always talking about a person. Okay. And not only do they love rumors, they never ask the person who the rumor is about. They rather stir up rumors, they rather share rumors. But they never actually go to the person and ask them whatever that issue may be, if it pertains to them. Okay? If a person is like that, they're, they're most likely negative, And psychologically, they are automatically insignificant. You do not want to be around people who rumor. Okay? Don't waste your time around people. And I know it's hard not to because some of y'all love drama and negativity. Some of y'all love being around people who have the latest information on this person or that or this is going on. Y'all love that because it gives y'all day fire and fireworks, okay? It keeps y'all going and excites y'all. need to stop that because you're entertaining negative energy. Because if that person loves negative energy and they love spreading rumors, okay, they are actually an insignificant individual if they don't necessarily come to you about it face-to-face -face if it has something to do with you. Or some other person about it and explain the situation to them if they never ask questions and get the facts okay that rumor is just negative energy and it's sticky you don't want to be involved in that next is a toxic person needs followers to validate themselves they need attention and followers to valid they need they need followers if they don't have followers they don't know themselves if they don't have an entourage of people worshiping them they cannot validate what they say if when they say something okay they need the backup of whoever is behind them to validate and give them the okay that what they're saying is okay in order for them to be confident enough to spew okay so that's another form of followership. One person that's in the room, they have to be surrounded by someone all the time. That's negative energy. I'm not talking about bodyguards. I'm talking about a groupie. I'm talking about a person who can't stand to be alone. They always have to have somebody to follow them 
to make them feel good about themselves they can never be alone okay that's potential that's potential toxicity you don't want to be around that because they're going to expect you to be their follower eventually next person they seek attention to feel good about themselves they are attention mongers they need attention they need attention from the outside world they need attention from you they need attention from various people they always seek for attention because they feel like if they don't get any attention they cannot validate the existence they cannot they cannot validate that they're a living species or that they are human so they need attention some girls need attention to themselves and make them feel like they're even beautiful they always want somebody to tell them oh you look good or you look beautiful please push this like button please push this like button without this like button I will die I gotta have attention please give me your attention so they hunger for that attention okay you don't want to be around that person because they will always want you to give them that attention. they will always seek attention and if you don't give them enough attention or if your attention is on yourself and you're worried about your career you got other things to take care of they will fight you tooth and nail until you are forced to give them their, your attention okay they will cause things that happen just to get some attention they will cause an argument just to get attention from you they will cause unnecessary events to occur just so you can give them your attention you got to avoid those people another one is an individual who loves talking about people negatively or even otherwise now you could say how is it otherwise because an individual who has to talk about everybody else and they're not centered on themselves okay has an ego problem where they feel good putting somebody down and raising themselves up by talking about everybody levels themselves or try to compare themselves to someone else so they like talking about people and this also includes people who just love talking and communicating about other people but they never talk about solutions okay what I tell you before a small-minded individual talk about events like what happened well no a small-minded individual talks about people that's the smallest minded individual okay they just talk about people talk talk to you know he said she said he said she said small mind the average mind which is your average American person okay on a general basis only talk about events okay what happened in the news what happened in sports you know what happened last week what happened on the job they just talk about oh what happened what's the events they talk about the events that's all I do is talk about the events they talk about what happened or what is happening they just talk about they just talk about what is it's just describing a thing it's like a sentence that just describes the color of the car and the wheel is big and it was painted oh it's a nice day that's it a higher minded individual okay someone who is an exception to the rule someone who can run this country someone who can be a leader someone who has the potential not to be toxic someone to think for themselves is a person who doesn't talk about people or events they talk about solutions not about what it is how can we fix what it is not about who he is but how can we fix our our talk about the solution to dealing with the drama or the rumors or whatever you think about this person let's fix the situation let's not talk about the situation that's the higher mind individual that's above your average so when you deal with somebody who has to talk about someone all the time they're always talking about people especially negatively oh this person this and this person that okay you need to be away from them that's toxic okay and eventually when they spew in all that nasty venom and dogma they're gonna start making you sick as well second one it go it ties in what it's got the same okay this person seeks no solutions to their problems they seek no solutions even if you give them solutions they'll still talk about the problem even when they have the solutions around them even when they have the potential to get out of whatever situation or the change the situation all they do is still talk about the situation or whatever the problem is and never accept generate or think about a solution 
you got to get away from them because they will drag you down, my American people. Next is a person that believes anything. A person that believes in flying unicorns. A person that believes in flying cars. The only flying cars you'll see is probably over the ramp or Dukes of Hazard or stunt devils that you may see on TV. Okay, you'll see a flying car once you jump over the ramp. Okay, but you won't see a flying car on a normal, everyday, average day, at least not yet, because you people are not ready for that. Okay, we can't even drive on the average road, let alone flying in the sky. Then we'll really be in trouble then. Okay, but these type of individual will believe anything. They'll believe anything a person tell them. They'll believe anything that their religion tell them. They'll believe anything that the outside world tell them. And they will never question it. They believe whatever comes to them. If you are around someone who doesn't question anything, who believes anything that somebody tells them, or believes in whatever religion that's out there, and they never question a religion, they never question other religions, they never question the system, they never question what's being said on TV, they never question what they read, they never even question themselves. If you deal with people like that, okay, and they just go along to get along, and they believe anything, okay, they are a troublesome, distorted type of individual where you can't tell them anything. If you tell them something truthful, they'll never challenge it. If you tell them about solution, they'll never think about it. They'll just say, oh, whatever's whatever. My situation's okay. Until they hit the wall 100 miles per hour and everything shatters. Okay? Then by then it's too late. And that type of mind is a non-thinking mind. There has to be a filter up here. There has to be a barrier between yourself and the outside world where you have principles and a constitution to yourself. If you don't and you believe anything, then you have no foundation, then that person is shallow. You can't build a foundation on a shallow individual. Morpheus said that. Now, the next one is a, a person who needs to purchase expensive items just to show off. That's right. A person who needs to prove that they are tough by showing off. A person, like for example, okay, I pump iron, right? And I'm a physical trainer. So let's say that I do it on purpose where I just take my shirt off and I start making these videos with tank tops on, okay? Now, mind you, I don't know what the future holds, but I know the temp right now the temperature is kind of cold, so I need this coat and this hat, okay? But it gets extreme to the point where I need to wear I need to wear a t-shirt. Okay. I need to wear one of these shirts right here. Okay. I need to strip down to it because it's so hot where it's uncomfortable. I don't want to be making these videos and I'm sweating and trying to talk to you and I'm like, oh my god, like, oh and I gotta pause every five minutes. You're like, is he okay? I'm going like this and sweat's getting all in my eye and I'm like, oh my god. And I wanna be comfortable when I'm making these videos. So I would probably wear a t-shirt during that time or wear what do you I don't know what you call it a, a bodybuilding t-shirt where it's just a V at the top but it wouldn't be to show off but for example if it's on a decent day where I don't have to of course I'm gonna wear something like this which is a long sleeve but what I mean is if I'm just doing it on purpose like some women who wear tight pants okay and spandex for pants just to show off okay then that means they're just looking for attention. They're just trying to show off. Okay. Like I did wear a couple of shirts that was in my other video and they were just, it looked like they were tight on me. That's because of the condition of the room. Okay. And it, the shirt was extra large. It was an extra large shirt and it still looked like that because I'm a, a, a pump iron. I'm naturally going to look like that. But I try to be as modest as possible. But when it comes to other outside vanities, like when you try to paint your car a certain color and you just, you know, put it on big wheels or just anything that's just outlandish. Most times it's just for attention. And it goes further than that. Like when you need to all, when you're around somebody that needs to always buy something that's name brand, regardless of how expensive it is. Okay. Or you got to be around somebody who's always focusing on what's the most expensive because they got guests coming over and I want my guests to see that I have the most expensive China wear. Or I want my guests to see that my floor is completely spotless. You know, I want my guests to know that I got this big, I don't know, 56 inch television screen and I got money. I want to produce a vision that they see me and my persona as if I'm this very upstanding individual. That's a person also who has toxicity. That can be a very toxic situation. It really can, believe it or not. 
because you're looking at somebody again it goes all the way down the list that needs validation because if they get it if they get attention by other people who are looking at them saying oh baby look at your legs oh I like that it makes them feel good about themselves it makes them feel significant about their actions and to them it gives them validity as to what they do or what type of ideas that they may have for themselves you see and therefore if you are around them if you are married to them if you are their husband or their boyfriend or whoever else that you might be or even just their close friend okay they will drag you into their world of vanity they will make sure that even you try to produce or wear or show off because they want to look good standing next to you so therefore you're going to end up starting to do the same thing when you're shopping at the same places you're talking the same way are you needing the most highest class because they don't want to be next to you if you don't have the high class clothes on okay that's a toxic individual and you have to be careful of that because you end up spending more money than necessary and you end up living this false vague pointless life of vanity because you're not really being who you are you're putting a facade up for the world and anybody who needs listen anyone who needs to put up a face a false facade okay for the world and not being themselves they're lying to themselves and they love lying to everybody else all right now next this is this is interesting this might fill out for a lot of you people and a lot of you might sit back and say dang that's me either an unorganized person an un organized person are an overly organized person to the point where they're OCD okay that can be a toxic situation because when you're unorganized you can't think straight things ain't right you got to figure out how to do things at the last minute you're trying to figure out where to go here at the last minute you got to put your dishes here your shoes are in the wrong place where's the broom at where's the mop and you do whatever comes your way and then most people their excuse is I got kids or I'm never at home so why should I organize my home or I got I got grown teenagers who are 17 19 and 16 that can clean up for me so that's ex that's their excuse of being unorganized that itself can be a very toxic situation I'm gonna tell you why because there's something comforting about having your life together there's something comforting about being organized. There's something decent about having things where they need to be at. And it, it will depict your own thinking. It depicts who you are as a person when you can come into your house and you know where things are. Not OCD about it. You just you you have a habit of putting things where they're supposed to be. You know where things are. So that means within you and your own psychology you have a sense of keeping things together and keeping things in order and making sure that at least on a modest day-to-day -day basis things are going to be where they're supposed to be okay so that's easy when it's modest on when it's, you try to put it there and you know where things belong there may be some days where you might skip it but you at least put them there where you're supposed to be when you have the time to and you put the effort into doing it where you're not just completely unorganized and you go into your house or wherever you are in your job or paperwork on your desk and everything is everywhere because if everything is everywhere everything is everywhere up here you're scattered right here because you're scattered up here all right you're organized right here because you're organized right here you understand now let's talk about those who are overly OCD okay overly I want things where I need to be at I want the shoes here my my dress got to be so creased and my clothes got to be so perfect I'm getting ready to go out on a Friday night I don't want the smallest suspect where you can put you can put a magnifying glass on it I don't even want that to be there okay and then if they drop like a little bitty piece of coffee on their pants or on their dress down here they'll just change the whole outfit okay completely OCD Our wherever everything else might be at home where they just want air I'm trying to see if this camera's we're gonna have to push the button there okay anyway kinda had a little flash over there but maybe somebody didn't like what I was saying I'm just being honest okay anyway 
So they want everything to be so perfect where they get stressed out if you put your shoes in the wrong area or if you just accidentally drop, drop, drop a rag on the floor or if you forget to pick up your cup and put it in the sink where it belongs, they yell at you and rant at you. You don't want to deal with that person because life is not perfect. Okay? We are not perfect. Okay? And your cup and your cabinets aren't going to be sectioned perfectly every single day. Listen, those type of people you want to stay away from. And you can be OCD about some things. But if you're OCD about everything, everything got to be just right. Like, oh, oh my God, it just, just have to be right. This have to be perfect. It has to be so perfect. If this pen got just a little scratch on it, I'm just going to throw the whole bag away. Is this when you deal with a person like that, they're not in real life. Okay, they are unrealistic. They will be so toxic where you're trying to live a normal human lifestyle. You'll put your cup down on the table to go to the bathroom for five minutes. And when you come out, they will cuss you out for the cup sitting right there on the table. And you meant to put that in the dishes. So they will, listen, the reason why they're toxic is because they will allow their entire day, their whole day to be ruined just because something's out of line okay not only is that bad that compulsive disorder not only is it bad okay not only is it distorted that means something's wrong up here where they're trying to make up for a loss in their life and the way they're making up for this empty loss this emptiness is by trying to make sure that everything else is just so perfectly creased and has to be so right and has to be put in the right area and just have to be so particular and, and if it's not, you know, they'll lose themselves. There was a person who was not so much OCD, but they were a germaphobe. And it's one of my favorite movies. It's called um, As Good As It Get by, uh, what's his name? Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson was one of my favorite actors. He was just funny. Just, you know, he had that face expression that just made you laugh. And he wasn't OCD about most things, but he could have been extremely OCD in that movie where he had to put like five or six different locks on his door um he was so ocd where and a gerbophobe where he would walk within the squares on the sidewalk and he felt as if he stepped on the crack that would be the end of the world he was so bad where he would bring plastic forks his own plastic forks from home to go out to a restaurant so if you can imagine what that movie's like if y'all never watched that movie you should watch it it's it's a pretty good movie okay it's called as good as it get okay with helen hunt and um, I keep, I don't know why I keep forgetting his name. I just said it, Jack Nicholson. It's an older movie, but it makes a lot of sense. And it has, it has very traditional romance in it that we miss, that we don't have anymore nowadays. And it has very traditional, simple man meets woman sensation that we don't have that charm anymore. We don't, and, it, the, and the more I think about it, it makes me sad. You know, it just makes me sad on the inside of that this generation don't have that charm anymore and that movie was so sweet where it just it made a lot of sense okay for him to do what he did but anyway he had some so so much of a, a, a an order to himself where he would wash his hands one time with the soap one time just to pick up this fresh new soap out of the box or bag and just then he'll throw the soap away and then when you look at it in the movie he got a whole basket trash can full of whole pieces of soap and you'd be like dang that's a that's a waste of money no but if you transform that to ocd and that you got to have everything perfect and everything got to be so right and oh i just I, you, know, you know i'm gonna wear this shirt one time you know then i'm gonna throw it away you know that sort of thing i know that's to the extreme but believe me there are some people out there that do that and they are leaning towards that whenever you are in a house with somebody who will cuss you out you know, for putting the cup in the wrong sink instead of putting it over here in the dry sink or the wash water sink, okay? Or they whole day will be frustrated because you didn't clean up your crumbs or the kids left the crumbs somewhere and now they want to get mad the whole day and all frustrated. Y'all lazy and you and not clean up and clean up your room and I told you to do this. Something, no, listen, psychologically something's wrong up here, okay? Because again, it's not real life. And that points towards illness. And I want to put this on top of it before I finish this off. Because that's pretty much all the list of those toxic people that we look over that we need to be careful of. There are a lot of people here in America 
on a general basis, on a general basis, who are um, untreated mental patients who are really out of their mind. Okay, I mean, seriously, Adam, I mean, we all have our uh, failures. Okay, we all have our issues and we are all not straight in the head. Okay, we've done some things that just don't make sense, you know, and uh, we, most of us regret our actions from the past today as we have gained wisdom and knowledge. But there are some people who have not walked up the knowledge scale. There's some people who today, they, they live with their mental issue and they try to they try to absorb it with pills and medication which makes it worse okay the pills and the medication only puts a band-aid on the issue but it doesn't solve the problem it's almost like you got pain or as a bodybuilder myself and i'm in the gym and i'm boom 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 when i get home i'm, I'm like oh i'm sore like the, especially my chest they were like oh man i need a massage bad and it's sore okay now if i go get some advil or tylenol or just some type of pain medicine okay and i just pop the pain pills and i don't feel the pain no more now you would say you would say morpheus what are you doing okay what does that mean morpheus they'd be like then morpheus you're not you're not actually healing your muscles you're making it worse because actually you're just making yourself feel as if there's no rippage in your muscle you're just taking a pain pill to get rid of the pain but the muscles are still in its recovery stage you see so like sick people who are gone appear and they they function every day with these medications and pills and antidepressants listen antidepressants and all these over-the-counter medications and some of them they do booze up and they have to drink at the same time or they drink with their medication or they just drink anyway every day when they get home just because they got a habit of drinking what that is doing is the same as a gym situation you're taking in this pain medicine that just eliminates the pain but it's not going to solve the problem it's not going to solve the issue and it makes the issue worse because now you're just living with it every single day that's sweeping dirt underneath the rug but when you pull the rug back it's still like a you know maggots or some type of bugs and you know you get all kind of festation you don't know why you don't know why your whole house is 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 infested it's infested because all you do is sweep this mess underneath the rug and you call it a day and a lot of people are like that okay so we got to remember that so instead of dealing with the and everybody's not going to be perfect it's not going to be like your day is going to be completely organized you're going to have times where it's just going to be a hurricane hit your life that is mentally, financially, spiritually, and at home. And it just takes time to get yourself in order and get yourself together. It, it That happens. But then there comes a time where you got to stop yourself from overdoing it. From overthinking that, oh, I got to have it this way. It has to be like this. It got to be so perfect. <laughs> if my wedding is if my wedding is messed up, just if the cake is the wrong color, if my napkins on the table is twisted this way and not that way, you know, if they come up and my bridegroom and the rest of them, they, if they show up with different colors, I'm going to be ruined. It's like, I don't want the wind. I'm just going to scream and walk. I mean, just that's too much because you got to think about this in your day. Listen, in your day, you got an option to choose positive or negative energy. This is the whole reason for this video positive or negative energy you got to do everything in your power even if things don't go your way even if it's unorganized even if all these things on the list don't happen for you take it for what it is and be done with it and try to move into positive say okay well maybe it was messed up we'll try to fix it maybe it didn't work out the way that i wanted it to but well, we'll just fix it. Oh, you just clean the cup. Oh, just put the cup where it belongs. Sometimes you got to learn how to just be easy with the situation. Just be easy with it, okay? Because if that individual who's OCD or all these rumor negative, seeking, always talking about people, um, believing anything, purchases stuff just to show off, you know, and unorganized or just overly organized, overly organized, when you deal with people like that, usually there's something wrong going on within themselves. You know, something's not right up here. And you got to step back and evaluate the situation and not be engulfed in it because I always tell you this is Morpheus. You really only have one life to live. 
You want to live that life as best as you can on the positive scale as much as you can and get rid of the negativity. Whatever that negative force is, you got to make that negative force as small as possible. If you allow these negative people to come into your life, if you allow these negative situations to explode, if you allow negative people to be there just because you think you owe them something, they could be your family. They could be your husband. They could be your wife. They can even be your child, your children, your teenagers can be toxic from coming home from school or coming home from college or even coming home from the service. They can be toxic in your life where they're nothing but distortion for you. And just because they are related to you, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to accept toxicity. There comes a time where you can accept it because it can be changed by your positive energy. Then there comes a time, my American people, as this power red pill for you, where you have to turn that switch off and say, I'm not dealing with it. You can do that somewhere else, not in my house. You can be toxic. That's fine. You can have your free will to do that. But you're not doing that in my circle. I want to live to be positive. So toxic people like that, that list I gave you, go over it in your mind and think about it. And that will change your life. That's a gift from Morpheus to empower you. You got my connections down there at the bottom. Give it to those who needs this inspiration. You got my book down there and the other connections that you have. Like I always say, 2020, America rise. Are we going to die in the muddy water? Like it, read it, share it, and look at this as much as you need to. More power to my American family.